Hey guys, I am your friend Amit and in this video we are going to understand what is system design and this video is a part of the system design series which we have started and you can find the playlist link in the description below. So now let's get started. This is the timeline for this video. First we will learn what is system design and then we will learn why do we need it and then finally what are the required concepts. First let's see what is system design. It is very simple. If we go by the official documentation, system design is a process of defining the components, API, database tables, and etc. for a system to satisfy the specified functional and the non-functional requirements. It might be difficult to understand the definition, so let's break it down and then understand it. System design is a combination of system and design, where system means assembly of different components for the specified requirements and design means how efficiently the assembly of different components is done. For example, if we have to build a large applications like Facebook, Uber, Instagram, WhatsApp, YouTube and etc. First we note down all the requirements. While noting down the requirements, generally we categorize the requirements as functional and the non-functional requirements. Now let's understand this by taking a few examples and also I must mention that this video is not about designing a particular application. We are not going to design any application here. We are just learning what is system design by taking some examples. So this is not about designing a particular application. Now we will take examples to understand the functional requirements. If we take the example of Instagram, the functional requirement can be like this, upload image, like, share, comment and etc. Similarly, if we take the example of YouTube, the functional requirements can be like this, upload video, view, like, comment, search, subscribe to our channel and you can try this feature right now by subscribing to our channel and etc. These were the examples of functional requirement and now let's Take a look at the non-functional requirements. If you take the example of Instagram, the non-functional requirements can be like this. Any image uploaded by a user should not be lost because this is very important, right? And there should be no downtime at all. And the system should be able to easily scalable. Similarly, we can do it for other applications like YouTube, Facebook, Uber and etc. And this was an example of non-functional requirements. Here we should also understand that based on the requirements we also decide what is important and what is not and where we can do the trade-offs and where not. So it's all about balancing the things. For example in case of Instagram fast image rendering on user device is very important because Instagram is all about images. The number of comments on a post might not be important. Again, I am repeating the number of comments on a post might not be important. We can have the trade off here having no real time sync across multiple same types of server. So on multiple servers, we can have a different number of comments for a particular post. So at the user end, the number of comments might differ, although it will get synced gradually. Now let's move to our next thing, which is why do we need it? We need it because we want our whole system design in a such a way that we can scale our system easily so that we should be able to add a machine or increase the size of the current machine when required and this comes when our number of users start growing. The system should have no downtime, any request to the server should not fail, our system should have a low latency, API should be very fast, our system should have multiple copies of the server. In case of hardware failure, it should be easily able to up with almost no downtime. Our system should be able to sync across multiple same types of servers for data consistency. The load should be evenly distributed across all the servers. Our components in the system should be reusable. All the components in our system should work together as a system and each component should work at its best efficiency. So these were the things which we want to achieve. So we designed the system and try to assemble all the components efficiently and it is very interesting. So now let's discuss what are the required concepts. 
basically we engineer our system in such a way that all the requirements are fulfilled we use the concepts of computer science such as computer network distributed system parallel computing by using these concepts we do the estimation design the database design the api decide the storage system implement caching integrate the load balancing and many more things and these things are very interesting and we will learn all these concepts in the coming videos so in the next video in the series i'll be coming up with the complete design of instagram uber whatsapp youtube facebook and etc so that we can learn all the concepts easily and implement them so this was all about the system design now we have understood what is system design so that's it for now please like share comment and subscribe to our channel see you in the next video